Okay, Angie, would you please introduce yourself to us and let us know why you're here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, let me get my screen up because you know how it goes. We do the run through and we do all that to then be like, what? <laughs> exactly. It went smoothly, and now right. in real time. Exactly. So you know, um, yeah. Give me one second, just so I can take your time. Time. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Is that okay? Yes. You see my screen. All right. Come on. Give me a second, y'all. Where is everybody coming from? As we give Angie a moment. Are you new to graduate school? I know Shell has been here a while, guided me through my time here. <laughs> what about the rest of y'all? Okay. <laughs> I uh, in the second year of uh, master's program. Okay. Okay. Thanks for sharing. All right. Is that good to go now? Yes, we're good to go. Thanks for sharing, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah, I actually wanted to kind of see who's in the room too. Um, but yeah, well, um, I guess I can do like a little short inter introduction first, but um, we got an intimate group here. So I'm um, looking forward to, to seeing um, who came today. But yeah, good afternoon, y'all. Good afternoon. Happy Monday. I will say from the poll, I was uh, I was expecting everybody to put super exciting. I was like, yeah, you know, but you know, it's Monday. I'll give you, you know, I'll give you that. I'll give you that because sometimes we just, we just not all the way there. So it's all good. Hopefully I can spark some energy in y'all today. And, you know, maybe that will kind of uh, change throughout the uh, time we have together. So, but yeah, but thanks for choosing to learn more about the Spectrum Center, um, you know, here at University of Michigan. And, you know, to those who are in attendance with me live today, I, you know, I, I love seeing y'all faces and then those, you know, who might be watching at a future time. Um, welcome. <laughs> uh, my name is Angie Freeman. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm the program manager for events and partnerships at the Spectrum Center. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to see that this uh, Affinity Community Resource Week is happening. I think it's just really important that uh, we share with all of our students and uh, specifically graduate students um, about what resources are available, how to learn, you know, about what you all can get here at University of Michigan. So. Um, but yeah, today I'll be, I'll just be sharing a lot of information. I'm just going to like kind of go through it and, um, you know, refer you back, of course, to our website a lot, um, you know, and coming into the center and talking with us to get more clarification on some things. Um, but yeah, but uh, yeah, can we, I want to kind of see going off of what uh, Sam was saying, like who's in the room and, you know, I don't know if y'all are first year, second year, third year students, um, you know, PhD, doctoral candidates, all the things. Like I, you know, want to know. I want to know y'all too. So, if you if you want to come off mute, that'd be great. And, you know. Hi, Angie. Um, I'm a doctoral candidate, all but dissertation in sociology, and um, I really enjoy the Spectrum Center's fall graduate student mixer. Oh yeah, you came to that. Yeah, yeah. I've attended in the past. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you come? Did you come to the one this um this past week? I couldn't make it last week. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. It's all good. It's all good. It was live in here. I'm telling you, it, it was live. It was a good time. It was a good time. But we'll do it again. And um, you know, some of our students actually um mentioned having something more specific, uh, in addition to the graduate student welcome um for graduate students. So I'm working on that. <laughs> So, but yeah, thanks, Shelly. Anyone else? Um, I'm Melody, and this is Charmaine, and we're uh, robotics graduate students. 
Robotics, huh? Okay. Is that like the, the dance rope? Not this kind of robotic. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe in my future somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I can aspire to that at least. Cool, cool. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Who else is here? Hi, my name is Kyle Smith. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I am a transfer student to the University of Michigan. Um, so I'm in the educational studies PhD program. Um, so while it's my third year of doctoral studies, it's my first year at Michigan. I'm, I'm with the second year cohort, so I'm a weird one, two, three year all around. Nice, nice. Yeah, thanks a lot, Kyle. Ooh, anybody else? Uh, my name's David. Uh, I'm a second year uh, master's student in performing arts technology in the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. All right, all right. So you, yeah, okay. You you can vibe with the music theater. Dance. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, did, is that everybody? Let's see. There's one, two, three, four. Is it five people here? I think you can see. Cool. All right. So I will uh, continue. But thank you all for coming off um, audio like that and uh, you know just vibing with me. So I appreciate that. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dive into this. So um, some topics that I will um, share with you today include the following. So um, our LGBTQIA2S+, um, what that means you know, at University of Michigan, what the Spectrum Center is, what we do, like what our um, office is like, you know, just I'm gonna describe a little bit of the, the vibe that you can expect when you come in. And then uh, what resources we offer, um, the programs that we host, we do a lot of events. So I'll kind of dive into that a little bit. Um, opportunities for graduate students. And then I'll be sharing like broadly um, opportunities we have for all students. But, um, you know, I am aware that um, our um, guests today are, you know, graduate students. So I'll try to share with you all a little bit about that. Um, some other stuff that we do, you know, how you can connect with us, and then we'll have some time at the end for some questions. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start off a little bit of uh, I'm gonna start off with some bragging a little bit uh, about our center. But if anyone's familiar with the Campus Pride Index, which is a, a benchmarking tool for um, to see like if you know how queer friendly campuses and colleges and universities are. The Spectrum Center, we received the five out of five stars, which is, you know, we're very, very proud of that. And we work really di diligently to provide uh, just the best experience for our students and our queer students on campus. So um, so that was like a, a huge thing. And then also the same Campus Pride Index, we were also named as one of the um, uh, the 40 best, best of the best, um, colleges, you know, by, by Campus Pride Index as well. Um, and then lastly, we were named number one for LGBTQIA2S plus friendly colleges and campuses in the state of Michigan, which was cool. Um, and then also fifth in the nation. So it's like, you know, you kind of scale it down. You're like, oh, you know, first in Michigan, but then five, like what? So, um, you know, it's really cool. It, it excites us, but we also know that, you know, we all, we still have a lot of work to do and we're always growing and learning. And, you know, we can't stay stagnant, you know, we can celebrate these moments, but we we know that we have to keep striving just to be better. And, um, you know, the cohort changes, the, co you know, the student population, the student needs, they they change every year. So we're aware of that. And we, you know, try to try to keep on our toes as much as possible. But, um, but yeah, overall, like we're just, we're really proud, um, you know, to be where we're at today. So um, uh, to continue a little bit more about the center, we're the oldest LGBT resource center in the country, which is really, really cool. If you think about the progress that we've made on colleges and university campuses with having queer centers, gender centers, uh, resource centers on campus, like we're the first one, which is really cool. Um, and there's just been, you know, so many that have been created ever since. And um, so yeah, so uh, we just celebrated our 50th anniversary a couple years ago, uh, which was an amazing honor. Um, we had like a big old celebration in the center and, you know, we, we, we did it up. It was, it was really big. So, um, 
sadly though, our founder, Jim Toy, passed away very, very recently. And um, you know, we just continue to work hard to upload the legacy that Jim created and you know the the inspiration that Jim wanted for UM and then also our students um, on campus. So So uh, a little bit about our Spectrum Center. So, you know, we are a resource center on campus. Um, we're not a we're not a student club. A lot of um, students and, you know, just our, our peers and colleagues will misunderstand us to be like a student organization or a club. But um, we're we're an actual department. We're an office uh, resource center. But we, you know, really serve and support the members of our LGBTQIA 2S plus communities. And we do this through, you know, different, um, we do this through three main things, which is education, advocacy, and community building. Um, and I'll touch on a little bit of these as we go along, but um, yeah, we just, we just really work hard to enhance the campus culture and increase student belonging. Like we know that students thrive better when they feel like they belong. And so we try to create that space when you come into the center and, you know, come and just hang out and vibe and which I'll, I'll share with you a little bit about what that's about if you haven't been in the, the center before. So we're located in the Michigan Union on the third floor. So when, you know, I always tell folks, when you come off the elevator, you make a right and you look for all the gay flags at the end of the hallway. <laughs> uh, we're, there, we're down there. Or you could just listen out for like our loud and laughing voices because you know, we're we're always having a good time. We're just, you know, hanging out with students, our staff, um, you know, we're we're always making some kind of noise. <laughs> so, you know, just listen out for the voices or listen, you know, look for the the flags. But um our office hours are listed here. And um after hours, I wanted to note that um uh, we do invite student organizations to come in our center and just use the space. So a lot of students will reserve our center and just come in and you know have group meetings or if they're doing something for their classrooms um so that is extended to you all as well like if you want to come in um especially like on the weekend or something like it's just quiet <laughs> um we also do after hours hiv and sti testing we do this weekly so um we do it after hours i think it's from five to seven um on tuesdays and um, it's been, you know, we've gotten a lot of traffic, you know, already this, even this, this fall semester, which makes us very, very happy that, um, you know, we're taking care of ourselves and we're doing, doing what we need to do. And then, uh, yeah, we have events and programs and stuff after hours too, which I'll go over. Um, Drop-in hours. So we also have an opportunity for you to just come and ask any questions with one of our staff, like one-on-one. -on -one. We've all dedicated uh, drop-in hours weekly for you to, you can sign up for those online and you can pick like who you want to meet with. But um, yeah, every week we're just kind of waiting for y'all to come in and, <laughs> you know, come in and see us. And, you know, if there's specific things or, you know, whatever it is, like we just are open arms and whatever you need. And so uh, we have that. And in our family room, this is like a little snapshot of our, of our um, space. And uh, yeah, it's it's a really cool vibe. Uh, when you walk in, like students are hanging out, uh, circled up around the the round table, doing homework, chatting, spilling tea. Like they they be talking about a lot <laughs> a lot of different things. Uh, but it's cool. It's just a, you know, uh, it's 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 a particular vibe. And so students like you'll see students taking a nap or you know doing homework. Of course, uh, you know we have safe sex supplies. Like right when you walk in, there's a a table with condoms, lube, dental dams, um, just information, like all, you know, all of that, like students just come in like, oh, I need two of these. And then they walk out. I'm like, cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, board games, we have like a whole thing of board games. You come in and uh, you can just play play with those. When we, we recently had the, um, um, the uh, internet outage uh, on campus, like, you know, we were like, all right, well, <laughs> you know, we can't we can't get on the internet, so let's just you know play a, play a little game until it comes back on. So uh, it's always good to, to have that. We have a library resource um, as well, so a, a, a huge library of books that you can rent out and you know borrow and all that kind of stuff. So tons of things. 
um, just come in. If you haven't been in the space, just come in and, you know, and see us and see what it's about. It's pretty cool. So some resources that we have for our um, LGBTQ plus students. Um, so we have gender, uh, gender and queer focused student organizations. Uh, I put graduate and undergrad because um, we, um, you know, we, we, we focus on, on both. And so I just want to let you all know that there's a ton of organizations, student organizations on campus, like as big as we are. When I came here, I was like, oof, we got that. What? Like, are, are they all active or what, what are they, you know? So um, yeah, a ton of undergraduate, but we also have a, a lot of our graduate um, queer focus organizations too. Like it's all the, the schools really like have their own. So like, you know, out in business, um, the business school has one, social work has uh, a queer club, um, public policy, uh, let's see, STEM, you know, we have, I have a whole bunch of um, different graduate organizations. So, um, so yeah, I just want to share that. And then scholarships, we give out scholarships um, for our students. We have project-based grants too, which I'll, I'll explain a little bit more later, but basically if you have an idea for an event that you want to put on, but you don't have the funding, you can submit to us a project-based grant um, proposal and we'll look at it and be like, cool, like this sounds great. Like we'll give you, um, you know, $500 towards your event for, you know, it's up to $500. So, um, so, that, you know, that, that goes for graduate students as well. So if you, you know, come, just come to us and, you know, you, you all have all the great ideas, of course, like, you know, I can only think of so many things, <laughs> but y'all know what y'all want and what, 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 you know, to, to specifically, um, you know, cater to the graduate community because I know it's different than undergrad. And then our gender affirming care and essential needs. So we do offer a lot of ton of information. Um, I'll direct you a lot to our website for our gender gender affirming care stuff. But um, we uh, we have essential needs um, that we support students with when you come in. And, and I'll, I'll I'll I'm gonna get to this later, but I'm excited to just share. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we have. Um, for example, like binders that we give out um, to our uh, trans individuals and then um, essential needs. We have, um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, goodness. The name is escaping me right now, but I'll come back to it. I have another slide on that. And then lastly, our gender inclusive learning environment, which we call Gilly. Um, so this is basically in housing uh, gender queer um, folks that want to live in a space that they really feel comfortable and supported. Um, and I believe graduate housing has um, gender inclusive learning environments as well. So um, if you do live on campus or want to definitely check that out too. So our um, trans community it has a special place in our hearts. Uh, we like to just ensure that we focus some of our efforts on helping students navigate that particular part of their identities, um, including gender affirming healthcare, which um, uh, Michigan, Michigan Care or Michigan, uh, oh gosh, Michigan, University of Michigan Hospital. Um, I'm still a little bit new uh, to, to UM, so bear with me on that, but um, our hospital provides um, a lot of that gender affirming care, which is really great. And then um, students can also get coverage, you know, they're also covered by their student insurance to get some of those um, uh, services, uh, which I think is really cool, like how, you know, we work together in that sense. Um, other kind of resources for our trans students are chosen name and pronoun policy. So, you know, um, our system that I've learned is really um, uh, unique in the in the sense, like if you want to change your your name that you want to go by, it it will um, what do you call it? sync? It'll sync within um, all the different. Uh, gosh, what am I trying to say? It'll it'll sync within all the different like softwares that we use on campus. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, it'll show up on. Um, uh, oh goodness. 
I between like Gmail and Canvas and uh, with your class, um, with your professors, in your email I, as a person. So um, I was able to change my name and you just like go in and you do it. And then like everything, now my name has changed and everything now. And I didn't expect that. And so sometimes I'm like, I think I'm surprised at how fluid and how like sort of comprehensive my name change was for sort of in every facet of the university. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate that. Yes. All of that, all of that, all of that um, is really, it's really cool. So we do have that. Um, we also offer Pronouns 101, um, which is free to faculty and staff, which I'll um, talk about in a second as well. So our programs, we do a lot of programming. Like we do big scale programming, small scale programming. We get down, we get down, y'all. Um, and I'll go over some of these signature programs and signature events that we have. So, um, but before before I do that, I just want to share the three areas or three functions of our center and how our services um, and programs are broken down. So we have um, education and training, events and partnerships, support services and wellness. So for education and training, we offer the um, LGBTQIA2S plus web course. So this is like a self-paced or, you know, self-guided web course that you can go through um, that gives you a ton of information on the LGBT community. And it's just, it's very, um, it's very informative, right? Like if you're kind of, you know, just kind of want to know some of the basics or like entry level kind of stuff, it's a great, it's, it's very comprehensive as well. Like we put a lot, a lot of work into it, a lot of ton of resources and stuff. So um, you can sign up for that. It's on campus. The other one is our pronouns one-on-one, which if any department or um, um, organization on campus wants us to present to them our pronouns one-on-one, it's a two-hour workshop. Um, we don't do anything less than two hours because we know that it, it, it takes that amount of time um, to go through everything. But we'll come to any organization and put on like a whole two hour workshop for the uh, the staff if they think like, hey, like I think our staff kind of can benefit from, um, you know, something on pronouns, then we'll do that. So we have a whole team that does that. And then Towards Solidarity um, is another, uh, this one is a six hour. So it's like a, you know, full day training workshop that we also put on for um, our campus community members. And um, this one is very comprehensive. It's more so like, so we don't do safe zone training anymore. Uh, we're, you know, we've gotten away from that. I think a lot of um, LGBTQ educators are now getting away from safe zone with the whole sticker and, you know, placard and all that kind of stuff, but more into like a solidarity, more action-based kind of support for the community. So this one um, is, is very comprehensive. Um, but anyway, so we do that. That's our training and education. And then events and partnerships, which is under my area. Um, this is where we do like all the queer events on campus programming, things like that. Um, and you know, also collaboration. So our um, LGBT History Month, which is coming up in October, which I'm really excited about. We put together a um, LGBT uh, History Month committee and you know, partners across campus are helping to put together this full calendar of events across UM um, to just basically um, <clears throat> create like a centralized place where people can get what's going on in October for LGBT History Month, whether you're, you know, doing something in Rackham, the graduate, um, you know, organizations or undergrad or, you know, gender housing, whoever is doing anything like, you know, you can find what's going on, which is cool. So that's kind of like my current thing right now, which I'm pumped about. And uh, we also have a programming board, which I would definitely encourage any of you all to be a part of. But our programming board is a um, student organization. Uh, it's through our office. So we uh, we have a what they call SSO student um, sponsored organization. And um, it's consist of um, undergrads, graduate, doctoral students, any students. If you identify as a student, you could be a part of this. And so it's student led in the fact that um, we give the students free reigns on what kind of programs they wanna see on campus. And we just support, we fund, 
and they come up with the idea. So if this is something that, you know, you want to get involved in, um, you know, we just started our, you know, new cohort this, this semester, and we're always adding people to the mix. But some of the kind of signature events that the programming board puts on is Pride Prom, which is a whole lot of fun. Uh, it's at the end of the year in April where, um, you know, a lot of students didn't get to do prom maybe in their high school or just at another time in life. So we provide an opportunity for you to just come and be yourself and do your thing and just, you know, celebrate your accomplishments in that way. So uh, Pride Prom is a big one. They do casual game nights, book clubs, uh, trans Transgender Day of Remembrance, which is a big celebration, gender affirming closet, all the things. Like there's a ton of events. <laughs> like I could go forever. So that's programming board. And then we have uh, Lavender Graduation, which is our uh, graduation ceremony for our LGBTQIA2S plus community. And this is also in April. And it's just a good time. Like it's just an opportunity for, um, you know, students to be recognized for their accomplishments and, you know, what they've done throughout their journey here um, in a more queer focused way. So it's really cool. So that's events and partnerships. There's a lot more, but, you know, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> and then there's uh, support services and wellness. So I really call this like the heart of our students. Like, like I do all the programming and the fun kind of things you can come to build community, but you know, support services and wellness is like the heart of, um, you know, our, our queer community in the sense of like creating, you know, having mentorship programs where students can link up with a faculty or a staff on campus that can just kind of guide them and, you know, help them through with whatever they need, right? Fresh Perspectives is a first year program specifically, um, but I'll still share about it, but it's like a cohort based model where students come and just like commune together and build community uh, around other students that are similar in the fact that they're first year and, you know, um, are also queer. And then um, essential needs um, for this one, we have, um, we we partner with uh, Maison Blue, which is the uh, Maison Blue cover, but we partner with them to provide um, like to-go bags with like groceries in them and like kind of pre-packaged, um, you know, kind of survival kit kind of thing. Um, so we have that in our space. So we, basically, you know, we provide all that for like just the the human, the human, right? Like the human, um, like I call the heart, but it's just, it's just different. It's just like, it's beautiful to me. Um, and uh, all the other kind of like services and like identity development, um, you know, gender affirming care and all that kind of stuff um, is under our support services as well. That's a lot, I know. <laughs> um, event center and trans students. So again, um, I just want to kind of highlight um, some of the stuff that we do. Um, gender affirming clothing closet, which we like to have this like kind of like close to the prior prom. So folks have something to wear if they want, you know, if they didn't have anything, but um, we're making it into like a permanent, we're hopefully making it into an, a permanent uh, clothing closet that can happen year round, which is cool. So people can just come in and kind of get any kind of clothing items that they need. So, um, but that usually happens in the, the winter semester. And in our name change clinic, um, students who are looking to, you know, change their name or their gender markers or, you know, anything like that, like we put on a whole clinic for, for them and, you know, helping them through that process because it's it's a lengthy process and it's a sometimes um, uh, complicated process, but it could be done and it has been done and, you know, we're here for it. Trans Day of Remembrance is a big one. Trans Day of Visibility, um, those are two big uh, events that we you know, hold, hold, you know, near, near to our heart. And then um, our trans and non-binary uh, passport clinic, um, which we're in the process of planning that for this semester too. So um, if you have a passport or, or, you know, look into, again, change your gender marker or, you know, update your name or your last name or whatever it is, like we help with that too. All right, and then uh, welcome program. So um, this year we had our Pride Outside, which was a lot of fun. Um, this was a part of the like Welcome to Michigan events. And um, we had a drag show, 
Kona ice, like the little shaved ice um, cones. Um, that was a, that was a hit. Michigan Pride T-shirts, like it was it was a full thing. Um, it was a, a really good time. We do that yearly. And then uh, our cutie BIPOC welcome. Um, this was a couple weeks ago now, and you know we just like to center our uh, black and brown queer students, and so we um, you know provided this opportunity for students to come and it you know it's it's open to all students on campus whether you're undergrad grad whatever the case is but um you know that's a it's a good time like we just we ate good we uh listen to music we you know build community we play games all the things so um you know those are always a good time our graduate student welcome um which I know we talked about it a little bit in the beginning but that happened last week was a really cool um event and so um, I did want to say that this year, um, some of the graduate students actually mentioned um, having like a, um, for for the next one on the list, which is our cutie BIPOC kickback, having like a graduate focused uh, kickback, which I think is great, you know, so we're trying to get more uh, graduate students in our center and trying to, you know, uh, plan and program for our graduate students, because we know that, you know, not a lot of times, like, you know, the mixing and mingling together, like, you know, graduate students want to have their space and their their thing and do their thing and, and build community amongst each other, which, you know, we support that. So, um, so yeah, so like, again, we're always trying to improve and, and, and do better. So this is one area that we are focusing on to uh, try to bring in and support more of our graduate students. Um, Fresh Perspectives cohort, I said I was going to talk a little bit about this, but um, this is our, like, again, our first year cohort um, group that we have just for first year and transfer students. And um, yeah, it's just a, a really good time for students to get together and, um, you know, build community amongst each other based on the fact that they're first year students and, and queer and things like that. But they get together, they play games, they go ice skating and bowling and do all these type of things. And, you know, we we fund it and we support it and they tell us what they want to do. So um, it's a good deal in my my opinion. And then our mentorship opportunities. So we have GPS and maps, um, guidance, perspective, support. So uh, LGBTQ or LGBTQIA2S plus um, and similarly identified students, they utilize this just for navigating um, and understanding their own identities and like what that means and you know, like just, it, it's a lot. It's, it's, there's a lot that goes into that, but we just want to make sure we provide that support. And then our MAPS mentorship and professional personal support. So this is the one that is uh, connected with faculty and staff. So we, the GPS is like peer to peer and then MAPS is um, peer to like staff or faculty. Um, so we're in the process of kind of revamping these programs and kind of, you know, enhancing them or revising them. So they'll be more, a little bit more active in the future. All right, what else do we do? There's more? Yes, there's more. <laughs> um, so the other things that we do, we provide um, student support, mentorship, and advising. So student, organ um, what do you call it? Student organization advising. Um, like I said, mentioned before, we have the student programming board um, that is sponsored through our office. So we advise them on events that they want to plan and kind of help them with that. We also have uh, mentorship and professional development. So we have every year we go to Mimbletech, um, which is stands for the Midwest Bisexual, Lesbian, Gay, Transgender, Asexual College Conference. <laughs> this, is, this is a handful. But Mimbletech is uh, a, just a student conference queer-based conference that we uh, take some of our students to. So um, again, if this is something that you're interested in, it's open to undergrads and graduate students, and it's an opportunity you can even present. Like we um, help students kind of put together a proposal if they want to present, which is really cool. And it just helps them with their professional development while you're in school and it's, it's paid for. So <laughs> um, that's like the best part. Um, support navigating campus. So we, you know, on our website, we have like a, a really comprehensive list 
and kind of navigation of like, where's our gender inclusive bathrooms on campus? And, you know, where can you go to, you know, find support and stuff like that. So um, we have that connecting students with other offices, of course, and then academic scholarships and pro project grants, which I talked a little bit about, but um, we, if you have an idea for an event, um, come tell us, fill out the um, application for it. We, you know, we we have a certain uh, amount put aside for students to run their own events. So, um, so that's the project grants. And then um, advocacy, culture change. Um, so for uh, advocating the needs of our um, uh, queer individuals, um, our graduate, uh, excuse me, our graduate research um, specialist recently conducted focus groups for our QT BIPOC student population in efforts to increase the support for our black and brown queer students. So um, I think we got um, probably like 30 plus students or something like that um, involved in these focus groups, but we got a lot of feedback with, um, you know, how our center can improve and like, you know, kind of what they feel in our spaces and, you know, how can we support them better, right? And so um, this was specifically um, with undergrads and our next step is to do this with our QD BIPOC graduate students. So be on the lookout for that, you know, if you wanna help us and be a, um, you know, a co-researcher in that and provide us, you know, some information on like how you feel, how you perceive the Spectrum Center and like, what can we do? And like, what would make you come into the space and things like that, like I said, we're, we're, you know, we're not stagnant. Like we're always trying to, trying to improve. So we, we need your help with that. So, um, so yeah, so we advocate for students in that sense. Um, a lot of our departments and organization, um, you know, reach out to us for best, best practices and consultation, uh, guidance and, you know, event planning, stuff like that. So, uh, we do provide consultation and then just, you know, serving as content experts on LGBTQIA 2 West plus identities, you know, and I say this with like, in the sense of speaking from our own experiences and, and you know, kind of our own identities, like we don't speak for the entire community because one is too big, <laughs> is, is too, you know, yeah, we can't speak on everybody, but, um, you know, we're authentic and sharing that. Uh, about ourselves so that's for advocacy and cultural change and then other ways to just kind of engage with us you can apply for academic scholarship um you can apply for the project-based grant like which i said so come on with the ideas uh, you have access to essential needs so like our food pantry like i said um partner with, with maize and blues cover we did i think annually we do a um, a cooking demonstration. So we do a cooking demo, which is cool. Um, we do it over at um, Maize and Blue's cover because they have this like full on like kitchen thing. And, you know, you can see the, the chef going to town, but like everything that they cook is in the cupboard itself, which is cool. It's like, it's not, we're not doing anything fancy or anything like that. Like it's all stuff you can get right here. And then uh, we have the pre-made pre uh, grocery bags as well. And um, programming board, I talked a little bit about that. So you can join that. You can also join our student staff team. Um, we do have graduate students that work with us. We have graduate um, specialists um, for the education team that I talked about and then the support services and wellness, which is cool. So yeah, let's see, where we at? Where we at? I think we uh, right on, kind of on time. So this is- Right on time. I know, right? <laughs> With no room for questions. But um, yeah, so this is our contact information. Our website, y'all, we just, so our communication specialist just revamped our whole website. It is beautiful. I'm, and I'm not just like, I'm, I'm a little biased, but it, it's really, it's, we made it in a sense that it's improved for like navigation. It's easy. It's like user-friendly. We tried to make as less clicks as possible. Like, okay, if you're looking for this, just give it to me right there and that's it. So check out our website. What I'm trying to say is beautiful. Um, or you can stay in contact with us on social media if that's your, if that's your gig too. So yeah.
Thank you, Angie. Does anyone have any quick questions? I know that we'll be putting Angie's contact information in the chat so that you can reach out directly. No. Okay, y'all. So um, I want to thank you for your time here today. Angie, for your time, your expertise, and uh, your knowledge that you share, and to our audience for being here with us with your cameras off or on. Your camera's on with us today. I am grateful. I know that in the Zoom land that that's a big ask. And so I'm grateful for y'all to like, be present with us here today. Thank you.